Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'm going to solve a circuit analysis problem by my colleague Mary Ann Whitenauer using a superposition technique pioneered by my colleague Marshall Leach. So the goal of this problem by Professor Whitenauer is to find the current I flowing down through a 2-ohm resistor. We also have a 3-amp current source, a 4-ohm resistor, and a current-controlled voltage source of value 10 Ix, where Ix is the current that's flowing through a 6-ohm resistor with the current marked going to the right. And we also have a 12-volt source. Now to find the current I, we first need to find the controlling current Ix. To do this, I'm going to use superposition, where I'm going to look at each source one at a time while deactivating the others. Let's start by looking at the 12 volt source. I'm going to deactivate the current controlled voltage source by shorting it out. And this is the thing that the textbooks say you can't do, but Marshall Leach told me I can do it, and I believe Marshall. And I can deactivate the current source by opening it up. I'll call this case number one. So we have our 12 volt source, and that's going to induce a current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor in series with a 2 ohm resistor in parallel with a 4 ohm resistor. So let's see, I have 2 times 4 over 2 plus 4, so that's 8 over 6, or 4 thirds ohm. So I can find the contribution to Ix via Ohm's law as 12 volts divided by 6 plus 4 thirds ohm, so that's 12 volts over 22 divided by 3, and let's see, I can write 12 over 22 as 6 over 11, put the 3 in the numerator, and then I get 18 over 11 amp. Now I'm going to put a little 1 superscript on the i-axis down here to remind myself that this is the contribution to i-x that's coming from the 12 volt source, and let me rewrite that up here. Okay, second, let's focus on this 3 amp source. I'll deactivate the 12 volt independent source, and I'll deactivate the current controlled voltage source here. Again, deactivating the dependent source is something the textbooks tell you you shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, so I have my 3 amp source here, and that's now being split between a 4 ohm resistance, a 2 ohm resistance, and I'm going to draw this slightly differently. I'm going to write my 6 ohm resistance like this. So I have a three-way current divider. I think the easiest way to approach this is to actually think about these resistors in terms of their conductances instead of their resistances. So I'll write Ix is equal 3 amp, and in the denominator, I'll place a sum of the conductances. So I'll have 1 6 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth, and then in the numerator, I'll place the conductance of the resistance associated with the branch I'm investigating, which is over here on the left, so that's 1 over 6. And note that the current arrow is flowing to the right, so that's running opposite the direction of the current arrow from the source here, so I actually need to put a minus sign in front. Okay, so I have minus 3 amp, and let me multiply the numerator and the denominator by 12, so I'll have a 2, and then down here I'll have 2 plus 6 plus 3, so let's see, I have minus 6 over 11 amp. And once again, I'm going to put in some superscripts. Here I'm putting a superscript 2 on everything to remind myself that this is the particular contribution to the controlling current associated with this 3 amp source. And I'll write it up here. So I have Ix2 equals minus 6 over 11 amp. Okay, now for the really tricky part, we'll take a look at the current controlled voltage source. So I'm going to deactivate the independent voltage source by shorting it, and I'm going to deactivate the current source by just getting rid of it entirely. And this is definitely something that the textbooks tell you you can't do, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm a rebel. Okay. I have my current controlled voltage source, that's 10 Ix, 
going through a 4 ohm resistor. And then I'll have a 2 ohm resistor here in parallel with a 6 ohm resistor. My current measurement IX is facing to the right like this. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'll figure out what the current coming out of the positive terminal of the voltage source is. And then we'll use a current divider to figure out what IX is. So let's see. The voltage source is going to go through a combination of resistors. And let me figure out what that combination is. Okay, so 6 times 2 over 6 plus 2 is 12 over 8, which is 3 halves. So these two resistors here can be replaced with a 1.5 ohm resistor. And that parallel combination of 3 halves ohms is going to be in series with 4 ohm. I could write this as 3 halves plus 8 halves, which is 11 halves. So this whole thing here can be replaced with an 11 over 2 ohm resistor. Okay, so what is this current flowing out of the positive terminal? Well, by Ohm's law, that would be the voltage, which is 10 IX over the resistance of this combination, which we just figured out was 11 over 2, or in other words, 20 over 11 IX. So what is the actual current flowing through this 6 ohm resistor? Well, to emphasize the fact that we're just indicating the amount of current associated with this particular current controlled voltage source, I'm going to put a superscript 3 here. So I have 20 over 11 IX, and the current arrows are going opposite directions, so I need to put a minus here. And then the current is being split between this 6 ohm and 2 ohm resistor. So I have a current divider. So I have 2 plus 6, and then I want to write down the resistance for the resistor that I'm not exploring. So we're not flowing down the 2 ohm resistor, so that's what I want to put in the numerator. All right, so I have minus, and let's see, I have 2 over 8, that's 1 over 4. 20 over 4 is 5, so I have minus 5 over 11 ix. And here I have to be very careful. Notice I'm not putting a 3 on the right-hand side, because this ix on the right-hand side has to include all of the contributions. The logical mistake people often make is something like putting a superscript 3 here on the right-hand side, or more often what they do is they won't write a superscript 3 here, and they'll think these are the same variable, say, oh, well, if those are the same variable on each side, then ix must equal 0, which doesn't make sense, so this technique of superposition with dependent sources doesn't work. You have to pay attention to the fact that what's on the right-hand side here has to include all of the sources. So, Adding this little superscript here isn't something that Marshall does in his papers on the topic. This is something I like to do to help me keep track of things. Anyway, let me rewrite it up here. So I'll write IX3 is equal to minus 5 over 11 IX. Okay, so finally, what is IX? So IX is the superposition of these three terms. So I have 18 over 11 amps, and then I will subtract 6 over 11 amps, and then I subtract 5 over 11 IX. All right, so now the IX on the left is the same as the IX on the right. Let's see. Let me multiply both sides by 11. So I'll write 11 IX is equal to 18 minus 6, which is 12 minus 5 IX. So let's see, I would then have 16 IX is equal to 12. So IX is equal to 12 over 16, which is 3 over 4 amps. So that's what the controlling current is. The actual problem asks us to find I, this current going down through the 2 ohm resistor. Let's see, I could write a KCL kind of equation for this loop on the left and have 12 volts minus... Ix times the resistance here. So that's 6 times 3 over 4. Yeah, I'm being sloppy and not writing units anymore. 
Anyway, at this point, this gives me the voltage that's dropping across the 2 ohm resistor. So I should be able to divide all of this by that 2 ohm in order to get the final current here. All right, so I have 6 minus 9 over 4. Okay, so this is 24 over 4 minus 9 over 4 equals 15 over 4 amps. So you can go back and fill in the correct units here if you want to be picky about that. It's just very late at night and I'm feeling lazy. Anyway, this is the same solution that Professor Whitenauer found in her notes using more traditional textbook methods. Now, I'm not claiming that the superposition that we did here is somehow cosmically a better solution than any of the other approaches you might take to this problem. I'm not saying it's an easier approach per se. It's just another tool in your toolbox.